This is the city, Los Angeles, California. In 1877, early settlers sent a carload of California oranges east and began a great migration west. Not many oranges grow in the city today, but if you have the money, you can buy anything from a glass of juice to a 300-room hotel. People sell and people buy. If the sellers don't give a dollar's worth for a dollar, the buyers find out quick and the seller doesn't stay in business long. Some sellers take money for goods or services they don't deliver. When that happens, they wind up doing business with me. I carry a badge. It was Thursday, November 15th. It was hot in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out of Frauds Division, the bunco section. The boss is Captain Lambert. My partner's Bill Gannon. My name's Friday. The captain had just received a phone call, and it was easy to see he wasn't too happy about it. to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. just talked to has got a voice of an etched glass. She was really fuming. Well, who's this Captain Fremont she was talking about? That's what you're going to find out. I checked personnel. There is no Captain Fremont in the department. What's she so upset about, Skipper? This is the third time she's called since I checked in this morning. I couldn't get a word in. I have no idea what the screaming's all about. Hop out there and see if you can straighten it out. Name's Ethel Gower. Yes, sir. What's this? Little Sisters? Yeah, that's right. Gower woman runs a bar out in South Atlantic. Yes, sir. Sounds more like the command post for World War III. pulled out of the police garage and headed for South Atlantic Boulevard. 3.17 p.m., we arrived at Mrs. Gower's place. What'll it be, boys? You're Mrs. Gower? That's me. Police officers, this is Bill Gannon. My name's Friday. Where's Captain Fremont? Well, that's what we'd like to know, Mrs. Gower. You gonna tell me there ain't no Captain Fremont on the force? That's right, there isn't. Well, I should have figured you'd be on his payroll, too. When are you cops going to stop covering for him? We're not covering for anybody, Ms. Gower. We'd just like to ask you a few questions. Send that other plainclothes man over. He's the cop I want to talk to. What other plainclothes man? Look, I know the whole force is in on this con, so why don't you stop making like you don't know nothing about the nail? The what? The nail! The con game you cops are working. Now, just a minute, Mrs. Gower. We're not here to con you. We're here to try and help you. Help me? That's a laugh. Help yourselves, you mean. You're all scared to death. I'm gonna blow the whistle on your sweet little racket after what I told that desk sergeant. What desk sergeant? The one that booked me. You know I'm out on bail. Now, why don't you tell us the whole story right from the beginning? I was cheated out of my share of the nail courtesy treatment. And I ain't sitting still for it. I'm gonna write the mayor, the governor, and the attorney general. Cops or no cops, I ain't getting beat out on no 35 bucks. Who cheated you out of that money, Mrs. Gower? As if you didn't know. Well, tell us who it was. You play dumb if you want to. You cops is gonna sweat by the time I get done with you. All right now, Mrs. Gower, no more threats. You registered a complaint, and we're here to straighten it out. Now, are you gonna cooperate with us, or aren't you? Don't lean on me, buster. Little sister, don't scare. We're not trying to scare you, ma'am. We're just trying to find out what this is all about. Suppose you start by telling us how you were cheated. How I was cheated? Just look at me. I was cheated the day I was born. Ever since the doctor picked me up and slapped me, I've been whacked around by men. But me hit one guy, and it's in the can for me. I tell you, it ain't fair. I even get hustled by a cop. Which cop? The plain clothes guy, the sergeant that works for Captain Fremont. Well, what's this sergeant's name? Here. It's on all the receipts. Sergeant Preston C. Densmore. Well, did this man tell you he's with the department? He works for Captain Fremont at the nail. You know him. We don't know Fremont, Densmore, or this nail thing you keep talking about. Here, read this and tell me you don't know what it is. This certifies Ethel Gower as a friend of the National Association for Law Enforcement and as a contributor to the Nail Widows and Orphans Fund is entitled to all courtesy and special privileges. 
You were hereby ordered to extend same to this friend of Nail, signed Paul G. Fremont, Captain, Los Angeles Branch, Nail. And check that address, 150 North Los Angeles Street. That's the police department's address, but nobody's authorized to issue cards like that. You telling me it's no good? No, ma'am, it's no good. Then how come Axel Varney's got the same exact card and it works for him? Axel Varney? The shoemaker next door. I'll get him in here to prove it to you. Axel didn't even take out as big an ad as me, and his card works like a dream. And the first time I use mine, I wind up in a bucket. Well, now, what's all that about you taking out an ad, Mrs. Gower? You know what one. The nail magazine Sergeant Densmore sells the ads for. You all read it. It comes out every month. Is that what you gave him the $35 for, an ad? Sure. Little sister serves big drinks. You seen it, didn't you? We've never seen the magazine. Well, I seen it. Densmore showed me a copy. Every one of you is supposed to get it. That's what this Densmore told you, did he? Yeah. And for the ad, I got a courtesy card. <laughs> Some courtesy for shoemakers, maybe, not for lady tavern keepers. You call me, little sister? These boys are cops. Tell them about your nail card axe. Oh, sure. Carry with me at all times. Works like a charm. Thank you. But before I bought that little ad for your widows and orphans fun, I had a lot of trouble. What kind of trouble, Mr. Varney? Well, driving to Caliente for the races every Sunday, I'd always get one or two traffic tickets. Has this card been honored by police officers? Oh, works like a charm. See what I tell you. Who honored the card, Mr. Varney? Mexican authorities or American? Oh, I never get no tickets in Mexico, only here. Since I got that card, I've had five moving violations, four, maybe five parking tickets. Did the arresting officers extend any special privileges when you showed them this card? Oh, I didn't ever show it to them. Well, then why do you say it works? Well, Sergeant Dinsmore, he told me what to do. He said, whenever I get tickets, just tear them up. See? How long have you been doing this, Mr. Varney? Oh, about five months now. Just tear them up. That's the beauty of that courtesy card. You've been contacted by the police about those tickets? Oh, I got a couple of letters. Just tore them up, too. No sweat, no trouble. Let me give you some advice, Mr. Varney. What's that? Next time you get a letter, it'd be a good idea to answer it. Four thirty-five p.m. We returned to the office and checked out Sergeant Preston Densmore. There was no record of anyone with that name in either the personnel or CII files. The nail scam looked like a petty scheme, but it was injurious to the department as well as to the public. If a police force is to function effectively, it must not be held in suspicion by the community. Well, that'll do it, Joe. We'll have Axel Varney's nail card in a few hours. Oh, how's that? Had R and I check him out. There are four misdemeanor traffic warrants out for him already. Yeah. He's got a total bail tab of over 200 bucks. Gave all the dope to watch commander at University Division. Looks like that Gower woman never did believe you. Now what, Captain? She's been calling the chief's office. They say she sounds like a nice, endearing lady. Yeah, about as nice and endearing as a scream from the dentist's office. Look, Joe, you or Bill work up a 15-7 lay out this whole bunk. I'd like every patrolman, every watch commander to be alerted. See how many of those bunk cards are floating around town and under what circumstances a holder's parted with their money. Yes, sir. How about talking to Dan Cook, Captain? Break some kind of story in the papers, TV. All right, see what he can do. You take care of the 15-7, I'll talk to Dan, huh? I'd like to have that report by quitting time. I promised Eileen I'd be home on time tonight, Captain. We were gonna celebrate. Celebrate what? That I got home on time. <laughs> Saturday, November 17th, 9.50 a.m. We had Varney's fake courtesy card surrendered to the arresting officers. We also had another victim of the bunko, a businessman named Wesley Hundorn. Yes, sir, it's just like mine. The same card. And you say you lost yours? Lost, misplaced. When I saw that little squib in this morning's paper, it rang a bell, and I thought I should call on you, gentlemen. I'm a public-spirited citizen. Well, we thank you, Mr. Hundorn. Now, can you tell us why you were issued that card and by whom? Gladly. I first got a call at Wesley Hundorn's World. Wesley Hundorn's World? That's my place of business, a travel agency. Yes, sir. Captain Fremont told me if I were to advertise in the nail publication, I might get all your charters. What charters? Charter flights. Hawaii, Europe, tours for nail members. But if there is no such organization, I guess that explains it. Explains what, sir? Why, I never got any business from you. Yes, sir. All you got was that card. I never had any intention of using the card. I want that understood, officers. I don't believe in special privileges. When did this Captain Fremont call on you, Mr. Hundorn? Last July 12th. All right, can you describe him for us? We never met vis-a-vis. -vis. We spoke on the telephone. Did you mail your check to him? No, a sergeant came by. Was the sergeant in uniform? Same uniform you gentlemen wear. 
an off-the-rack suit and shiny shoes. Sergeant Preston C. Densmore. I have his receipt and my cancel check right here. It's uh, made out to the National Association for Law Enforcement, endorsed by Captain Paul G. Fremont. Thank you. $250. I took a full page. Would you like to see the ad? You have it with you? Yes. You may keep that if you like. We sure would. And then my coming here was of some value to you, gentlemen? Very valuable. Thank you, sir. No, no. I don't want any thanks. As I told you, I'm a public-spirited citizen. But there is one thing you might do. Yes, sir, and what's that? I'm afraid I overparked. I'm down on Main Street. Sorry, Mr. Hondoran. We can't do anything about that. Oh, come now. You can fix a little parking ticket. Well, now, I thought you said you didn't believe in special privileges, Hondoran. I don't. But I helped you, didn't I? Yes, sir. Doesn't one good turn deserve another? All right, we'll do you a good turn. And what's that? We'll try to run Captain Fremont out of Wesley Hundorn's world. Wesley Hundorn's copy of The Nail magazine provided us with a solid lead. A line in the masthead stated that the publication was printed by the Cabo Press of Los Angeles. They were open half days on Saturdays. It was 10.15 a.m. The address was a six-minute drive from Parker Center. Well, it's about time some officers showed up. But you better have the cash this time. Cash for what, Mr. Cabo? Well, the books. You are from Fremont, aren't you? No, sir. We're from Fraud's Division, Bunko Section, LAPD. Oh, I thought at last Fremont was gonna make good and pick up the books. What books? Nail notes, like that magazine you got there. I'm holding 1,500 copies in the back. Well, what do you men want? We want Captain Fremont, Mr. Cable. Oh, so do I, but why do you come to me? Well, you printed this, didn't you? Yes, sir, three issues. He paid cash for the first one, then he gave me a check for the second one. Just a moment, I'll show you. A rubber check for $750 that bounced 750 feet. I'm still waiting for him to make good on this before he gets that third issue out there. Well, this dated last August. Well, Fremont said he'd make it good, so I went ahead and ran off the third issue, but he never came by for it. Did you attempt to contact him? Oh, a man doesn't like to bother the police. I know you're busy people. Did you also print the cards? Cards? Nail courtesy cards. No, just the book. 500 copies the first issue, 1,000, then 1,500 this last one. Well, did you do business with Fremont direct? Yes, sir. Could you describe him for us? Oh, he's a man about 45, 50 years, around six foot tall, bald head. He, he looks like a police chief or an army officer. Well, isn't that him? We don't know. We've never seen him. Really? Well, he seems to be a nice guy. You'd like him. I doubt it. Eleven twelve a.m., we drove to the West Valley address Captain Fremont had given Mr. Cabo as his residence, 1-8. 865 Willa Vista Way. It was an empty lot. Monday, November 19th, 8.50 a.m. The weather turned cool over the weekend. I'd gotten a flat tire on the way in and had to change wheels. Bill was at work on time. Good afternoon, Sergeant. Glad you could drop in. If you ever change a tire on a freeway at rush hour, I'm lucky to be alive. Keep your coat on. The freeway's gonna get another crack at you. Yeah, what's this? A new nail member just called in. Nine ten a.m. Freeway traffic was still heavy as we headed for the Crest Retirement Home in Hollywood. Mrs. Jennifer Salt was the name of the nail contributor who had telephoned. She mentioned that she was 68 years old. Are you Mrs. Salt? Yes. We're police officers, ma'am. This is Bill Gannon. My name's Friday. Are you men from Nail? No, ma'am. We're from the Los Angeles Police Department. You spoke to me over the phone a little while ago. Oh, yes. For a moment, I had hopes. You had hopes? Poor Victor. I'm the only one he has left. And who's that, ma'am? My grandson, Victor. Everyone else has forgotten him except me. We write to each other constantly. You see, he depends upon me. But it's so difficult for me to accomplish anything by myself these days. That's why I was so pleased to purchase an ad in the Nail Monthly. Do you have a copy of the magazine, Mrs. Salt? No, I never received it. But periodicals do get misplaced in the mails. How much did your ad cost you, ma'am? $350 for the entire back cover. And were you given a receipt? Oh, yes, I have it here. Thank you. How did this Sergeant Preston Densmore contact you? I was here in the lobby the day he came to sell the rest home an ad. 
Did the rest home buy an ad? No, I was the only one here who did. Well, now, did this Sergeant Densmore give you a courtesy card? Oh, yes. That was why I purchased the ad. Wonder if we could see the card, ma'am. Well, I'm sorry. You must have misunderstood. The card wasn't for me. It was for Victor. I took the ad out in his name. Does Victor have the card now, Mrs. Salt? Oh, yes. Sergeant Densmore assured me that if Victor presented the nail card to the authorities, they would extend him extra privileges. But what do you mean, privileges? Victor's at Chino. He's in prison. <laughs> a.m. After leaving Mrs. Salt, we received a radio communication informing us that an officer Reed from Central Division was waiting to talk to us. The message was that it was urgent. We rushed back to the office. This is Bart Emerson, Sergeant. I pulled him over at 5th and Grand for earning a light. He tore up the ticket, so I brought him in. I feel like a fool, Sergeant. I was told I could tear up that ticket. And I explained that nail card's no good. How'd you get the card, Mr. Emerson? From Sergeant Densmore. I took out this ad in the book. Mr. Emerson says he has an appointment with his Sergeant Densmore today. How's that? He's coming to my place to pick up a check for another ad. Yeah, what time? 11, 11.15. Where is your place of business, Mr. Emerson? I subcontract a fleet of skip loaders. We're on that job out at Lancashire, and I keep a temporary office there. If you don't need me anymore, Sergeant, I better get back on the air. Right, thanks, Reed. You know something, Sergeant? What's that? I feel like an idiot. <laughs> After briefing Emerson on the procedure we wanted to follow, he left. Thirty minutes later, dressed in soft clothes, we drove out to his job site. Bill would pose as a construction workman. To witness the conversation I hoped to have with Sergeant Preston C. Densmore when he arrived. 11.30 a.m. We had been waiting for the suspect for almost an hour. 11.34 a.m. A 67 beige Chrysler convertible pulled up outside the construction shack. Our plan went into effect as soon as he stepped inside. Howdy, Emerson. Hi, Sergeant. I got to run over the hill. Some of my equipment's lost up. This is Joe Frazier here, a friend of mine. He'll keep you company until I get back. Howdy, Joe. Joe, this is Sergeant Densmore. I was telling you about him. Oh, yeah. You're with the L.A. Police, is that right? That's right, partner. I'll stay by the phone in case that Pacoima job calls. Yeah, I'll tell him I'll be over there about noon. All right, boss. Stick around, Sergeant. I'll be right back. Talk to Joe here. He's selling the heavy equipment on this job. So you're selling the big stuff, huh, partner? That's right. Are you the officer that gave Emerson that card? You mean the nail courtesy card? Is that what you call it? Yeah, sure you are. That's my department ID, and that's the nail card. National Association for Law Enforcement. We all belong to it. You know, I wouldn't mind having one of those myself if they work the way Emerson says they do. Boss says they work great. Well, of course they do, partner. We in police work have reciprocal agreements all over the nation. Wherever you go, friends of Nail are treated with big courtesy. How do I go about getting a card? Well, just by cooperating with our organization. Well, how's that? By advertising in our magazine, Nail Notes. It's a national periodical, circulated to and read by every peace officer in the nation. Must be a big magazine. It's one of the advantages of advertising, partner. Our circulation is looking right at a quarter of a million a month. You print that many, do you? You bet you. The magazine is the only source of revenue for our widows and orphans fund. You mean the money from the ads? Your ad is a contribution to help support widows and orphans of all police officers who gave their lives in line of duty. Yeah, that's all right. How much does an ad cost? That's up to you, partner. The smallest ad is $20. Full page is $250, and the back cover is $350. Well, how much do I have to pop for to get one of those uh, cards? As a friend of the police, we measure your sincerity, not your wallet, partner. Just keep in mind that all contributions to Nail go to our widows and orphans. Now, what should we write you up for? Full page? Well, let's see. I got about 220 bucks on me. Well, that's fine. Uh, there's a discount for cash. You get 30 bucks off on the full page. Now, what do you want to say in your ad? Oh, how about just good luck from a friend? Well, now, that's real nice, partner. You are a sincere friend of the police. Here's your receipt. Thank you. OK, what about the nail card? Coming right up. Signed by Captain Fremont himself. You just fill in your own name here on this line. OK. No money, partner. All right. There you go. 
Thank you very much. Police officers, Densmore, you're under arrest for attempted grand theft bunco. Oh, boy, oh, boy, I knew it. Knew what? A bust was brewing. Sooner or later, I had to get clobbered. It's our duty to advise you. You have the right to remain silent. You have the right to the presence of an attorney. If you desire one, cannot afford an attorney, one will be appointed before any questioning. You understand that? I've heard it before. Do you understand it, fella? Yeah, now don't get uptight, partner. I'm just small potatoes. But I'll take you to the big man if you treat me nice. You know better than that, Densmore. Oh, all I got's 10% of the action. Give me a break. Sure, just like you give people with this cheap, sleazy con of yours. It wasn't my idea. Yeah, sure. Now, now, now listen, boys. You treat me right, and I can take you to the boiler room right now. You can toss a net on Fremont and the whole operation. It's his bit, not mine. No deal, Densmore. You're going to settle for one stinking card when I'm offering to stack the whole deck for you? If we have to. But if you want a level, we'll go this far. When you come up for sentencing, we'll get a letter to the judge explaining what you did, if you do anything, and if you helped. We can't guarantee how it'll affect his decision. Now, that's all we'll do, Densmore. Clear? As glass, partner. Twelve fifteen p.m. We drove the suspect to an old rundown house at 6020 North Adams Avenue in West Los Angeles. Densmore took us into the living room where telephone solicitors were busily at work. Mr. Goldring, this is Captain Fremont of the Los Angeles Police. No, nothing's wrong, sir, but it'll pay you to listen to what I have to say. Is he Fremont? I ain't here. Everybody's Fremont, but that's himself. Can just anybody walk in here? With a key, yeah. The old hands are always bringing in new faces. Most phone hustlers are floaters. They work a few hours and drift out. We're two men short now. Hey, Paul, you got a minute? These men want on? Yeah. Are you Fremont? That's right. But on the horns, you're Captain Fremont. Ever work a boiler room before? San Francisco, Seattle, Chicago. You? Worked with him in Frisco. Hmm. Good voices, both of you. OK. I pay three bucks an hour and 5% of all the action Densmore closes for you. Grab yourselves a line. Start getting rich. What's this? Prospects. Give me a couple of those sheets, will you? Before you crank up your first one, study this pitch. We read this. Any objections? No. I get a kick out of you, Drifters. You come into an operation cold and think you can handle it right away. It took me a long time to work up that sheet, and it's a winner. So stick with it, word for word, until you start swinging with the idea. When you think you're ready, I'll monitor your first couple of pitches. Got it? Police officers, you're under arrest for grand theft. All of you, cradle those phones, line up over here. Get those hands behind your head. Hold it, mister. Don't make me stop you the hard way. What do you think you're doing? You can't bust me like this. I'll call another unit. Not on my phone, you don't. Those phones cost money, boy. Here's two bits. Keep the change for your Widows and Orphans Fund. The story you have just seen is true. The names were changed to protect the innocent. On January 10th, trial was held in Department 183, Superior Court of the State of California for the County of Los Angeles. In a moment, the results of that trial. The suspects were found guilty of grand theft. Grand theft is punishable by imprisonment in the county jail for not more than one year, or in the state prison for not more than 10 years. The other suspects were tried and found guilty of impersonating police officers and of the sale of membership cards in a false police organization. The maximum penalty for such offenses is a fine of $1,000 or imprisonment for one year or both.